questions, and he's been like almost jumping out of his seat the whole time. So I'll give him first uh, shot. Okay, thank you for outlining your dystopia that you've um, for the last hour. But um, it seems to me that your your moral argument is entirely consequentialist. That if we allow people to pursue their self-interest, somehow everyone will be better off. No, I don't now, care about everybody. I mean, let me be very clear. My argument's not consequentialist. My argument is, if I pursue my self-interest, I'm going to be better off. I think. I think if you do it right, you'll be better off. But you might, you know, you might not do it right. You might suffer, and some people will choose not to be self-interested, not to do it right, and they'll be worse off. If, the, if we just look at, just look at history, when the capitalist has pursued his self-interest, yeah. and there hasn't been a minimum threshold, <coughs> we're saying to someone, no, you're not worth a certain amount of money. You're, you're worth two dollars an hour. Yeah. But if we don't pay you enough, we don't care about how you survive or you know the sort yeah. of. So the whole point of the minimum wage is not just about restricting labor supply, as you seem to think it is. It's about assigning to someone, you know, you're not worth nothing to the campus, as most capitalists would see their workforce as expendable individuals they can just get rid of and hire when and as, and as how they please. And also on this, you know, on the, on the tax system, you know, you seem to think that um, the more Steve Jobs accumulates in terms of his personal wealth, the more somehow um, he is... Uh, benefiting society. However, there comes a point where the wealth you're accumulating is no longer productive wealth. Surely you, un you, you would agree with that? that no, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. No, no, it's, it's not ridiculous. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, so, like, it's, it's, it's anti-economic. Steve Jobs going from $60 billion to $70 billion is not, it's not, it, it's just purely, that 10 extra, 10 extra, that extra $10 billion is purely for his Self gain. It's not going to expand anything else. Okay, so, so he could use that productive wealth. I get that. He so could use that productive wealth to reinvest in the economy to help people because we're human beings. He doesn't we don't live as atomized. So, so let me so let me address this. You, you brought up two issues. Let me address those two issues, and we can bring up other issues yeah. after. That, right? Two issues. One. Uh, let me start with Steve Jobs because I remember it. I mean, there are two issues here. One, how does he make the extra billion dollars? By helping you guys. By selling you a product that you want more than what he's charging you for it. So you're better off, and he's better off. So that's productive. He's made the world a better place, and he's got another $10 billion. Now what does he do with that extra $10 billion? Right, he's $50 billion, that he uses productively, he invests it, he does this. But the extra $10 billion, he puts it in mattress? No, what does he do with it? What does he do with it? He buys a yacht. Oh, okay, he buys a yacht. Somebody built the yacht? It's in the bank. Put it in the bank. What does the bank do with it? Lend it. Lend it, Lend it to people? Yeah. I mean, he, the bank lends it to people. You know, Steve Jobs doesn't put it in a checking account, so it's not fractional reserve, because he doesn't need a checking account because of, for $10 billion. He puts it in a saving account, which is lent out, not as fractional reserve, but as a, as a legitimate lending, right? So it's, it's, it's being used. It's being used productively. No matter what he does with it, if he consumes it, it's going to pay for the people who made the stuff that he's consuming. But even better, if he invests it, it's going to create massive economic activity. The worst thing he can do with it from a purely economic perspective, from the perspective of people's well-being, the worst thing he can do it is give it away. But if he, if he puts it in the Swiss bank account, it's not being used productively anymore. What do Swiss banks do with the money? I mean, this is amazing to me. What do Swiss banks do with their money? Why are we complaining about the banking industry today? I don't know, but let's... let's, let's, let's <laughs> they're not lending today. Why are they not lending? Have you ever talked to a bank and asked them why you're not lending? Do you know why they're not lending today? Because bankers are greedy, so they don't want to make money. How do banks make money? They make money by giving you 2% and lending the money out at 6, 8, 10%. They make money. So bankers want to lend money. So why are they not lending money right now? I'm certain. There are two reasons. Because what? No one trusts them. I don't care. I don't have to trust you to borrow money from you. You have to trust me. The fact that people don't trust banks don't prevent me from going asking them for money. I owe you. You, should, you need to trust me. Why do people... Why are banks not lending money? There are only two reasons. One, regulators won't let them. And you just talk to bankers. Regulators won't let them because regulators are concerned about safety. And the more banks lend, the higher the risk. And regulators don't want that. You talk to bankers in America, I do a lot of that. I invest in banks. And 
bankers are being told by regulars don't lend. That's reason one. What's the second reason? People don't want to borrow. Why don't people want to borrow? Because the economy sucks. So I don't want to expand my business. I want to go out there and do a bunch of stuff because there's too much uncertainty. Uncertainty, by the way, created completely by government. Now, where are bankers putting their money, at least in the US? They're putting it at the Federal Reserve. Now, why are they doing that? Because that's kind of interesting. Because the Federal Reserve is paying them interest on their money. They never used to. So the, the United States banking system has close to $2 trillion of bank money sitting on reserves at the Fed getting a small interest on that money. It used to be zero, so you used to have no incentive to put it. Because the Fed doesn't want you to lend money. They're willing to give you an interest not to lend money. Bankers <laughs> want to lend. It's how they make money. In a free market, a market not controlled by regulated, there's tons of lending going on. No money sits in the bank, because when it sits in the bank, the banker can't make any money off of it. Think greed. It, it, to understand business, you always need to think what's in it for him. Right? That's why I love business. Because I understand self-interest. You want to sell me something, I understand exactly what your motivation is. You want to get the highest price possible, and you want to send, sell me this good. And I want to get the lowest price possible, and I want to get that good. And we can negotiate now, we understand each other. When you come to me and say, I'm here for the common good. I'm here to help all of you guys. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> that is complete gibberish to me. So, no, every dollar, uh, Steve Jobs, is as productive as his previous dollar. Money doesn't sit in the mattress. Keynes was wrong. I know he's British, but he was wrong. He was at the LSC, he wasn't at Oxford. Maybe that was the problem, right? <laughs> he was wrong. The problem, markets, is not some ridiculous liquidity trap where people don't Hayek invest. was also at the LSC. Yeah, I know. Was he wrong according to you? No, Hayek was mostly right. Many things uh, wrong. So yeah, the LSE is not the key. I, I was wrong in many things, but in his critique of Keynes, I was joking about the LSE. In his critique of Keynes, he was absolutely right. Um, what was your, your second point was, oh, about the, how, how people are valued. Yeah. Some people are only worth $2 an hour. It's all they can produce. If you, if they, if, 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 uh, if you pay them three bucks an hour, you lose money on them. Because they can, they're just, for whatever reason, uh, whether it's because they don't want to work hard, because they're lazy, or because they're incapable. They can't do more than two bucks an hour. When you put the minimum wage at three, you basically guarantee that they will get zero. And that's okay if that's what you want. I mean, I think it's horrible. I think somebody making two bucks an hour is much better than somebody making zero and living off the state. At least if you're making two bucks an hour, you know you're working. You know you're contributing to your own life. And you're learning a skill which would one day allow you to make gazillions of dollars. Most of the multi-gazillionaires, at least in the 19th century, started out in a lot less than what minimum wage is today. And they built fortunes. But you want to deny somebody a job for life because you think it's inhumane to give him two bucks an hour. I mean, people in other countries work for a dollar a day. And it's not fair. They it's should, wonderful. They, should, they shouldn't be. They live in abject poverty because they're not paid anything. And that's right. And what you want to do is kill them. What you want to do, and I'm, I'm completely serious about this. Those of us in there, and again, this is middle class, European and American, comfortable living. You don't have to worry about where your next meal will come from. You look at these poor kids in Indonesia and you want them dead. Because that's what you do. If Nike moves away from Indonesia, those kids starve. And you, you can't understand that no, because no, 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 the no, 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 option no. is starvation or working for a buck a day. And I take working for a buck a day over starvation any day. And those kids will start at a buck a day and one day they'll make more than that. They'll those, rise the middle class. Those kids are on a buck a day because the people who are employing them refuse to pay them anymore despite being able to afford to... Despite being able to but don't you understand that their life is better off for a buck a day than it would be if it was zero a day? Yeah, but why can't we improve their lives further by compelling the employer to pay them even Because more? they're not that productive. That's, that's the story. And as they become more productive, and you can see this everywhere around the world, including in the UK through the Industrial Revolution, as workers became more productive, their wages rose. And we started out in the UK at less than a buck a day. At a lot less than a buck a day. And by the end of the 19th century, there was suddenly a middle class. Where did the middle class come from? 
from increases in productivity, not from unions. The unions, unions hurt the middle class, they don't help the middle class. Yes? 